Hello friend! Having trouble with some boss fights? Getting killed by invasions over and over again? Always want to end arena, but with zero idea on how to start? Well, you've come to the right place! Welcome to Zuzukorin's one-stop arena building guide. I'll show you a simple arena design that will surely make your Terraria life much easier. I'm Zuzukorin and I aim to entertain you, encourage you, and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzukorn family! To begin, why would you even want an arena? Well, as the boss fights get more intense and fast-paced, it gets much harder to dodge attacks. Without the nice flat areas to run on, your homies' boots also get disrupted pretty easily. In addition, wings can only get you so high before falling, and it becomes extremely difficult to control your elevation. Of course, this is without the soaring insignia. If you have a proper arena, however, you have lots of space to run. You can also change your height as you please, and it can also add in beneficial items such as star lanterns and campfires. Depending on how you build it, you can also add in lava traps for invasions. First of all, I want to make it clear that there are many, many ways to build an arena, and if yours works, then great. There are many viable designs, but I'll be sharing mine. To begin, find a nice flat area near your starting base. You could do this somewhere else, but I prefer to have it near me for easy access. Invasions also usually swarm the middle spawn point. Most of the time, you won't find a nice flat area naturally, so just mine and flatten it yourself. Otherwise, just fill in a suitable amount of dirt blocks till you reach the level that you like. Personally, I also remove the background walls because I think it looks pretty ugly to me. There are no exact dimensions for this arena, so you can widen it or shorten it as much as you like to suit your needs. For my block of choice, I will go with the ebonstone bricks, which are simply made with ebonstone at a furnace. Other nice blocks I like are the grey bricks and the snow bricks. Those are really nice to use too. Just line the ground with these. If you want, just go two or three blocks lower as well. We really have to thank the developers for quick block replace here. This feature allows you to simply swap out the dirt blocks with the blocks that you're using, which makes it so much easier and so much more convenient. Next, we're going to need some walls. For the height of your platforms, there isn't really a set height that you have to go for. If you're in journey mode, a good height would be just the max range you can place. I know I'm jumping here, but if you stand still and build upwards in journey mode with extended range, the maximum height that you can place is a good indicator. If you're not in journey mode, what I like to do is first place maximum height while jumping, then place platforms the highest you can while standing still, then go for maximum height on the platforms while jumping again. But like I said, if you want it higher, feel free to do so. But keep in mind that flying up these platforms won't be an issue, but if you place them too close to each other, falling through the platforms will be a huge pain. So you would rather space them out more than keep them too close together. Next, start building the little solid block areas. What I like to do is place 4 at the bottom, then extend each layer by 2 blocks on the side. Then, remove the middle 2 blocks to place torches. There! Now just extend the walls upwards and repeat the process. So I've done about 4 layers in total, which is sufficient. If you want, 3 is probably okay, but I think 4 is a good number. Next, use platforms of your choice and build those all the way to the end of your arena. I'm using boreal wood platforms for this arena here. Then build your final pillar of walls. Our arena is starting to take shape, so just do this for the other layers that you've built. Next, we will be extending the pillar of walls to the top of the entire arena. This should be the last of it. There we go. Great! Now it's simply time to replicate. Build all these solid block areas on all the relevant intersections. There is another arena design that uses purely platforms or planter boxes. However, I prefer having solid blocks because these can actually block some enemy projectiles. I'll show you how to utilize the arena effectively later on. With that completed, all I have to do now is fill in the torches in the middle. The arena is finally looking pretty legitimate, and it looks really good if I do say so myself. However, don't think that the arena is finished yet. There are many features that we have to add in to get the most out of our arena. These boosts will give you much needed help for difficult boss fights and invasions. 
The first boosts that we will be getting are from campfires. These are easily crafted by hand using torches, and they can be placed to offer you life regeneration. Just place them wherever you like. As you can see from the top left, being in range of the campfire gives you boosted life regen, which is extra helpful in expert mode. Plus, the range of a campfire is surprisingly large. It covers more than you think. For me, I only lose the buff when I go from the first pillar all the way to the end of the third. So just place a few campfires around for its range to cover every inch of the arena. You can check if you missed the spot by looking at the buff menu on the top left. The next boost will be from Stars in a Bottle. These are crafted using empty bottles and fallen stars. They boost your mana regeneration rate, so it helps out if you're a mage or a summoner. If you're playing melee or ranger, you can skip this one if you wish to. Just like campfires, the range of this are much higher than you think, so just place them in a way to cover your arena. For the next boost, we will need some chain, made at an anvil using iron bars. Then, craft the heart lantern using chain and life crystals. These are extra important as they also boost your life regen. Just scatter them around as per the others. I do recommend placing one at the top of your arena though, because there will be times where you're fighting in the air above everything. So having one near there will give you a boost even if you're not within the boundaries of your arena. The next boost we are going for requires the Dryad. Head over to your local skimpy lady and buy some sunflowers. I'll just get about 5 here. Then buy twice the amount of grass seeds. So for me, that would be 10. If you notice, we can't plant the sunflowers directly onto the bricks. So just replace two blocks with dirt and plant the grass seeds. Then plant the sunflower on top. Sunflowers give you reduced enemy spawns, which are helpful during boss fights. Similarly, I recommend placing some on top, because having a wyvern spawn in during boss fights in the air could just ruin the entire fight completely. The last boost that we're going for is honey. Craft some empty buckets using iron, then head over to a hive in the jungle. Use these empty buckets to scoop up lots of that sweet yellow goodness. If you're worried that there isn't enough honey, just mine up some hive blocks. These usually release honey when broken, so just use them for a refill. To incorporate honey into our arena, dig up two blocks and pour two buckets of honey in there. Watch what happens when I walk through. I obtain the honey buff, which boosts life regen even more. You have to be careful with this though, because you could get trapped in there if you're not careful. But as long as you dash through, you get the buff without being hindered too much. This is the only boost I recommend spamming on each of the solid areas. You could go with less, but during a boss fight it is much simpler to have many of these, so you don't have to stress about going to the 2 or 3 that you've placed in a specific spot. With all those boosts completed, our arena is well suited for boss fights. However, there is one last bonus feature that I recommend you to build, and that is a lava trap to deal with invasions. Find a nice spot to dig a hole in the ground. There aren't exact dimensions for how deep the hole is, but you don't want it too shallow. Then, line the sides with your brick of choice. There, it looks pretty good to me. Then, remove the natural dirt wall so we can actually see. Then, create a solid row of blocks 4 to 5 spaces below the surface. Also, place two extra blocks in the corner here. This will prevent enemies from jumping out later on. Then, dig a column at the side. This is how we will enter the bottom compartment. Once again, just line the sides for the aesthetics and remove excess walls. There, that looks pretty good. Next, make a trap door for access into the bottom compartment. You could use teleporters, but if you haven't unlocked the steampunker yet, this is what you have to use for now. Build a row of platforms so that your character stands directly underneath the hole like so. Grab a bucket of lava from somewhere and pour that into the trap. The farm is now almost complete. Enemies will drop into the trap and can't jump out. To finish this off, head over to your local goblin lover, the mechanic, and buy some actuators, a switch, some wires, and a wrench. The colour doesn't really matter. Then, cover the top of your trap. Use the actuators and place them on the top, minus the two corner blocks. If you mess up, just use a wire cutter to remove them. Finally, place the switch wherever you want and draw wires using the wrench, connecting the actuators to the switch. The trap is now completed. 
we can freely turn the top row on and off whenever we want. We can also leave the blocks on most of the time so we won't fall in, and during invasions we can turn them off to review the lava trap below. I forgot to mention this, but placing whatever banners you've obtained also gives you a damage and defense boost from that specific enemy, so add those in if you want. The good thing about this design is that there are plenty of hanging spaces for your banners, which truly make your arena the perfect place for fighting. I'll now show you some ways you can use the arena. Here's one I built for my summoner series using snow bricks. As you can see, I went a little overboard with the sunflowers and the campfires in this one. But well, I think it does look pretty nice. The pillars are also extremely close to each other for this one. So, the thing about this arena is that the solid blocks actually protect you from many projectiles. If you look closely, the elf archer's arrows do not pass through the blocks, and by standing there, none of them actually shoot anything at me. However, this shines the most when you're faced with enemies like the Everscream. The Everscream's pine attacks are also blocked, and I can stand here perfectly safe. Of course, this also means that you can't attack them without a weapon that passes through walls, but as a whole, the solid blocks act as a quick cover whenever you need it. This also works for the center NK-1's minigun, but not its rockets. So just take note that you're not protected from everything. However, most notably, this does block the destroyer's lasers, so that's nice. Well, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too for more Terraria guides and coverage. Do follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. This has been Zuzucorn Games. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye-bye.